We've got six O days in the wild, but a mild release beyond that. Let's take a look at it in the patch report. Hello everyone, I'm Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative and our unofficial patch wrangler. I am back in my home office, which is a nice place to be. Uh, so we've got a nice camera, nice audio, should have a nice, nice time talking about some patches. So let's get right to it, starting with Adobe. Not a big uh, patch for Adobe, 37 CVEs out of seven bulletins. Obviously you're gonna look at Acrobat uh, first and Reader, PDFs, they get used all the time. This is the same thing where you open a PDF, boom, uh, code execution. See it a lot in ransomware attacks. So definitely roll that out first. Uh, everything else, Illustrator in, in design, same things, open and own. And then you have the substances. Uh, these are all priority three. None are publicly known, none are actively uh, attacked at the time of release. So let's just move on to Microsoft. 56 new CVEs, so not a huge release, but we have six, count them, six bugs being actively exploited in the wild. And we'll start with one that came from Trend Microsecurity Research, and that is this MMC security feature bypass vulnerability. And we're seeing this used by Encrypt Hub, AKA Larva 208s. Uh, it's part of their kit that they're using in ransomware. So definitely uh, check that out. Like I said, active being, actively being used. About 600 uh, organizations have been affected by this. So yeah, wanna get on that. Then we've got two here that are both listed as active and they seem very similar. So I'm guessing they're probably part of the same campaign. In this case, uh, they both get code execution when you mount a virtual hard drive, a VHD. Uh, one of them is in NTFS and one of them is in fast fat, uh, which is what happens to me at Thanksgiving. Uh, and they will, they get paired with a privilege escalation like the one I'll talk about in a minute, but it's really unusual to see uh, an overflow uh, in NTFS. I mean, we've known about overflows forever, and this is, I think, a heat-based buffer overflow. Yeah, for and an integer overflow on the fast fat. So just crazy that we're seeing this. Uh, Windows kernel, Win32. Hey, what do you know, an EOP. So what happens is you'll have an EOP like this that'll escalate to system, and then you run your remote code execution bug, and boom, you take over the system. So another one that's being actively exploited. I don't know if these are paired or if this is something different. But again, we have some NTFS info disclosure bugs. These are uh, different triggers, but same result. And the same result is just random heat memory, which is unusual that they're being exploited, but uh, interesting to see. One of them requires you mounting a virtual hard drive again, uh, but the other one has a physical component. So uh, that means like plugging in a USB or something. Uh, and it's very unusual to see a physical component actually being exploited, but Microsoft says this bugs are, are actively being exploited. So yikes, uh, definitely test and deploy those quickly. Wow, don't sleep on those things. Going down at the, the table here, you can see the table is back to looking normal, thankfully. Our blog had quite the moment last month, but uh, we're back. Uh, also note that there are several uh, third-party bugs here that I won't uh, talk about in Chromium. Uh, and there is one bug that requires uh, further action uh, and that's uh, in GPO. So definitely check that out. Um, moving on to the other critical bugs, there's a very scary looking DNS server bug, remote code execution in DNS. However, comma, I wanna stress here that the exploitation of this is incredibly unlikely because it requires the attacker to respond to a very specific DNS inquiry and to time that up and to get those numbers correctly. I've done DNS spoofing in red teams in the past. It's really tricky to get right. So very unlikely to see it exploited. Office bug, however, is a different story because the preview pane is an attack vector. Again, Microsoft says user interaction is required. So I don't understand how user interaction is required if the preview pane is an attack vector, but here we are. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't I don't know what to do about that. Maybe if you hit a preview in the preview pane or something, that's when it happens. I don't know. Uh, remote desktop services are also a little concerning uh, because they allow it, like if you uh, connect to an RDS, uh, an attacker would connect to an RDS gateway, they could be uh, exploited. So you really shouldn't be exposing a remote desktop to the internet. That's a bad idea, but I know sometimes you have to definitely audit those, make sure you know where they are and see if you can IP restrict them. If nothing else, the remote desktop client bug is not nearly as critical because you would have to connect to a, a malicious RDS server. So 
not a big deal. Also, uh, the Windows subsystem for Linux, which is really a thing, uh, you need uh, elevated privileges even before you hit the bug. So not really that, that cool. Uh, there's quite a few open and own bugs in Office and Office components, including a bug in Access that's listed as publicly known. Um, I don't think there's a lot of detail out there on it, though. Again, if you're opening malicious Access files that you're getting from uh, shaky resources, you really need to redo your, your uh, training for computer security because that's that's a bad idea. Uh, the Windy bug could hit uh, there's an RCE and Windy bug, which is funny to me, but I don't think that's ever going to be really exploited. It's not quite a thing that would happen. Um, there's a bug in XFAT that looks similar to the other bugs uh, in NTFS and uh, FastFAT, but it's not being exploited. So my guess is that's a variant of those two bugs. Uh, lots of privilege escalation bugs in this month's released. Most of them are just going to lead to system level uh, privileges. The bugs at Hyper-V get you kernel memory access, which is kind of cool. Uh, the bug in Windows Server could, is a file deletion bug. We saw that last month being used in active attacks, that type of bug at least, not this bug. Uh, so similar bug. Um, and Visual Studio gets you the, the privileges of the application and the others will get you the privileges of the compromised user. Um, here we are in Azure Arc Installer. This is the one that needs extra steps. So if you are running Azure Arc Installer uh, and if you, you onboarded machines using group policy, you need to roll out new GPOs. It's all in the bulletin, but it's a bunch of extra steps. So again, to those people who say, just patch, you don't know what you're talking about. To those sysadmins out there who are actually doing this stuff, good luck and God bless. A um, couple security feature bypasses. Uh, the first one is in map URL to zone, which uh, as you would expect, a feature by a uh, security bypass in that just means that your URL is gonna end up in the wrong zone. And Mark of the Web, yes, MOTW. Again, we're seeing that. Uh, these are not listed as publicly exploited, but we see these types of bugs being used by ransomware gangs all the time. So definitely test and deploy those. A uh, couple spoofing bugs in TLM hash disclosures. Um, yeah, not good there. Um, and then we have a file explorer bug, which is unusual because Microsoft says that it just could perform spoofing over a network. Okay, and uh, again, the level of details. Uh, a couple info disclosure bugs this month, uh, but again, it yields uh, unspecified memory contents. Uh, again, this is an NTFS. This one is not under active attack, at least it's not listed as under active attack. So maybe a variant of that as well. They uh, There's also a Windows USB video driver that requires physical access, and they don't specify what type, but since it's in a USB component, I'm guessing they mean plugging in a USB device. One single denial of service bug, uh, but it requires admin credentials, credentials to exploit. Who cares? Well, that is it. Quite a quick little month. Like I said, those six active bugs are really where you need to focus your time and energy on. Again, if you're running the Azure Arc installer, make sure you read that one carefully because uh, there are extra requirements. And when your boss says, what about DNS? Say, don't worry. Dustin said, it's not a big deal. Um, I'm not a lawyer, so don't hold me to that. Hey, our next uh, Patch Tuesday is going to be April 8th, and I will be right back here to take you through all of the fun and uh, hopefully another small month. Hopefully we can keep this kind of cool as we head into 2025. So until then, stay safe, everyone, and may all your reboots be smooth and clean. <laughs>